this week's cardiology countdown, we'll start with a cautionary note on azithromycin. This is an antibiotic uh, widely used, and related antibiotics have had QT prolongation issues. And so there's a large observational study that looked at the risk of cardiovascular death and total mortality during the five-day period of azithromycin administration uh, out of the Tennessee database. Uh, where Dr. Ray and colleagues have looked previously at COX-2 inhibitors, and they found a nearly three-fold increase in risk, and about 1.8-fold increase in total mortality um, with the five-day period of azithromycin that was not seen in patients receiving amoxicillin used as a control. Uh, and so this raises a bit of a cautionary note uh, that there may, in fact, be a QT-related ventricular arrhythmia issue with azithromycin, and hopefully further studies can help clarify this. At the number two spot is a position statement of the ESC uh, talking about uh, thoracic endovascular aortic repair. And this is a procedure done often for um, asymptomatic thoracic aortic aneurysms, uh, but other times for type B dissections. And then other bailout procedures could be considered. Um, but the position statement makes the note, I think a lesson we've learned uh, with TAVR and other uh, procedures that the multidisciplinary team approach uh, is a key way to really set up a program where you'd evaluate patients' risk, get multiple inputs of different services, uh, plan procedures, and have very careful follow-up and, and a program. And so a useful guide for a new uh, and more increasingly used procedure outside the coronaries as structural heart disease and uh, becomes more and more common uh, amongst interventional cardiologists. And at this, uh, this week's number one spot is a paper from the NCDDAR with over 1.5 million patients looking at temporal trends in bleeding. This is obviously a key thing in PCI as a, a major complication. And within the NCDR, they looked at elective PCI, unstable angina, non-STEMI patients, and STEMI. And fortunately, found about a 20% decrease over a period of 2005 to 2009 in the risk of bleeding. Now, interestingly, the two strategies that were associated with this uh, were a shift in antithrombotic therapy towards bivalirudin. Use went from 17 up to 30% of PCIs, and a decrease in the use of heparin and 2B3A that went from 41 down to 28%, sort of a parallel shift. Also, the use of radial approach, while only 3% of this registry at that time, uh, was another factor that had lower bleeding rates. And so the uh, strategies are working so far and may were help to further reduce bleeding as a complication of PCI. The benefits seen so far have been more in elective PCI and less so in STEMI, but as these new approaches become more common in STEMI, one might see reductions there as well. So for this week's Cardiology Countdown, I'm Chris Cannon.